In this tutorial, we will look at the New York L piano controls. Now, we will look at the mix controls, the reverb controls, and the tone controls. But first of all, we're going to dive into the settings controls. If you can follow my mouse, you'll see the settings menu is here. It's a little cogwheel. And when we click on it, we are presented with several options. We're presented with an overall tuning option where it's naturally able to go up and down quite dramatically. And if we double click, it goes back to the standard A4. We have a sustain threshold, which we can raise and lower. And again, double click and it goes back to the middle setting. Our MIDI channel can be chosen as Omni or any of the 16 MIDI channels. We have a transpose, which is plus and minus 12. And we have a RAM setting. Now, the RAM setting is rather important because we want to make this as efficient as possible and we don't want to be streaming a lot from disk. So I'm going to put it on high, which loads the first eight seconds of each sample into memory. As you can see, it's just loaded into memory. We also have the velocity curve. So we can change the velocity curve here and we can limit the velocity curve or we can change the curve itself. All very useful functions. And again, we can double click and take that there back to zero or enter any values. We can also double click on any of the other options and take them back to a value, a specific value we want rather than having to use the mouse to do that there. So we're going to cover a couple of the other little bits. We have settings presets up here and we're able to see that we're able to save our own with the save icon. We're able to choose a folder of settings, very useful if we're moving between machines, and we're also able to reload the settings. If we just hit that there, it'll reload from whatever folder it was set to. Now, we can go through them like this, but I prefer the drop down menu myself, and we're just going to leave it at default at this point in time. And the default settings, as you can see, everything's set the way I had it set. So I'm going to close the advanced settings now, and we're going to look at the mix control. Now, the mix control, very versatile. We can mix between two of the piano sample sets. The mix control can be turned on and off with this button here. As you can see, it's highlighted. And we get into the mix settings by clicking this button here. And as you can see, it'll light up. Now, what we have is we have a choice of microphone A and microphone B. We also have a, a delay for the microphone B, which can give us some great sounds, but can also really help if we're trying to create a particular type of ambience. We have a release gain setting. We have a pedal noise setting. They work in the same way as I showed you before with the other settings. These ones can be turned on and off. Also, we have a dynamic setting. And again, we can set the dynamics. At the moment, they're set at 80%. We can pull that back or right up to 100%. I'm going to just type it 80% again there. And there we go. We have a key shift, plus or minus five. We have a resonance control. Now, the resonance control is natural, dry, super, or emulated. And when we choose emulated, we then have a resonance slider that lets us choose where the resonance is. And again, I'm going to double click that there. And I'm going to set the resonance at about five. There we go. Now, in here, you can see from the GUI, the graphic user interface, the lovely little piano, and where the mic positions are. And I'm going to choose a position, which I want close cardioid. And you can see the samples load. And I'm going to keep the room, although I do have lots of options there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short sample for you now, and I'm going to use the mix control.
So that there was just the close cardioid. And I'm going to put it up to 100%. And it'll take it to just Mike B, which is the room. It has a beautiful decay, absolutely beautiful sounds, and the sample set is amazingly efficient. Now, one of the other things I'm going to point out while we're here is I'm going to point out the main GUI. For that, I'm going to hide the mix settings for a moment because we've went through those. And we're back to our normal startup page. So again, we have a presets menu. And as you can see, lots of nice presets are already set. Again, we have the save command. We have the folder to choose the presets from. We have a reload command, as we've seen with the other presets. An undo and a redo. So we can go back and forward. The question mark tells us all about the piano and the version. And this is a reload samples button here. So if I hit this, it will reload the samples in. This tells me how many voices I'm using. This is obviously a panic button. And this turns the piano on and off without having to use the door controls. Now we're going to look at the reverb control. So the reverb control, as you can see, is laid out in a similar way to the mix control. You can turn it on and off like that, pressing the button. You know it's engaged or disengaged. And that's how we get into the reverb controls. Now, when we go into the reverb controls, we have various options, and they're all showed with this beautiful GUI. We have a damping control, we have a room size control. So the damping, if I pull back on it, it's less damped. If I go forward on it, it's more damped. And you can see that there demonstrate in this little interior of the graphic. So again, I'm going to double click and it'll take it back to 50%. I have room size and room size, as you can see, the graphic again changes to show us what's happening. So we can go from a very small room a very large room. I'm going to just double click again, go back and take it back to a reasonable size room. And we have a width control as well. Now, while the width control doesn't show up in the graphic, it does change the width quite well. Um, we have a pre-delay and it does show in the graphic and you'll see it pushing the reverb signal to give a direct signal in that space. And that's called pre-delay. We have a high-pass filter, which lets us high-pass. And you can do it on the slider, or you can type them in. And a low-pass filter. Again, if you want to do something like the Appy Road Reverb trick, can be done with this. We also have a tone control. And again, it'll brighten it or darken it. And double-click to take it back. So that's our reverb settings. Now, I'm going to play a piece with the reverb settings on. I'm going to go back very quickly and just look and see what piano I have set up. And we're playing the room. Now, that's going to give me a very reverberant sound. So rather than have that there over reverberant sound, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mix control back to the close cardioid. And that's going to give me just the close cardioid and then the added reverb. That will give the best way of actually hearing the reverb itself as opposed to the natural samples of the piano being captured in the room ambience. And you can hear the reverb certainly in full effect there. Now, I'm going to take the room size and I'm going to increase it to 100%. And I'm going to let you hear the difference in the reverb. But I'm also going to take the reverb amount up quite considerably. I'm going to take it up to 50%. And you'll certainly hear all the properties of the reverb now without being able to mistake it in any way.
Finally, we're going to look at the tone section. Now, the tone section is no surprise. It's an equalizer. And we get to it the same way. Again, we can turn it off using that little control there. And we get to it in the same way we get to the mix and the reverb settings. So, it's a six band EQ. You have lots of options. And that's the beauty about this EQ. Again, designed with the thought of absolutely anything you need to do, you should be able to do within the plugin. So you can see we have an all pass, a tilt, arm pass, peak, high shelf, low shelf, low pass two, low pass, high pass two, and high pass. Plenty of options there to get absolutely any sound you want sculpted out of this. So I'm not going to do a lot, but I'm going to do a little to show you just how the tone responds. And all I'm going to do at this point in time is I'm going to high pass quite a bit, make a very tinny piano sound. I'm going to lift it up in and around the 2K range on a nice peak curve there. And actually, I think what I will do is I'll add a tilt there instead. Um, and we'll tilt it down. And as you can as you can see, plenty of versatility here. So I'm doing a nice scoopy bit there at the top. And then a nice warm bump in the middle. And let's see how that there sounds. The very last thing we're going to look at is the 1926 version of this piano. We've done all the demos in the 1991 version, but just so you can see, the 1926 uses exactly the same graphical user interface and everything works in exactly the same way.